Okay, uh, for this uh, lore video, I want to talk about the role of songs in Macross because every time I've gone through comment sections looking at people talking about Macross, they say, oh, well, this song is this, this song is this, blah, 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 blah. And, oh, these songs are boring, these songs are cool, this is cool, the blah, 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 right? But they don't understand the actual role that each that the songs play in each series, okay? So, I wanted to go through chronologically in the timeline from 0 to Delta, or actually 0 to 2. Um, uh, I forgot to put 2 here. Okay, um, I just put some pictures here, so you got... They, they cover the soundtrack with Yami Kyude, because Yami Kyude is awesome. Um, this is a scene from the second Delta movie that I'm not going to spoil, but it's, it, it hurts. This scene is painful. And, of course, Ishtar, because Macross 2 <coughs> is canon. <coughs> so, um, I want to go through each of these um, in order and explain how the songs... Um, how all the different songs play different roles and that it's just it's not just oh well we're using songs to end a war it's not that simple and and this is why people don't understand Macross outside of Japan and, and even people in Japan unless they really understand the lore behind this stuff there's a lot of uh, people making content in Japanese that is very very good about um, explaining all the details and like you know the, the specs of the different fighters and all this other stuff but um, in English, there isn't anything like this um, because nobody thinks about this. Nobody understands this because they they don't either they don't understand Japanese or they've never watched Macross with like they they've always watched a series in a bubble and not put any of the pieces together. So this is where I come in because I understand this. Um, let's start with zero. Um, the the role of uh, songs in Macra Zero is healing and destruction and this is shown by um, uh, the song Archon that uh, Sara sings when she's naked and she has a bunch of stones floating around her and stuff and um, Sheen sees her naked or whatever but um, uh, that scene is important because it shows that um, she's using songs to heal the the forest on the island um from that was was you know injured through you know the valkyries and, the, and some of the fighting that happened before that and she sings a song to be able to bring back life to the to the forest <clears throat> but it's also about destruction because <clears throat> the uh tori no hito is um <clears throat> sings the Horobi Nyota, which is the, so the song of destruction. And why is that important? Is because that was created by protoculture that if humanity was still fighting, even after they gained the ability to go into space, Tori no Hito was the guard to say, well, if they're still fighting when it awakens, I'm just going to wipe you all out. And that's why it's Horobi Nyota. And Sarah talks about this quite a bit about can't let the the Tony to sing the Song of Destruction. So, um, those are the two roles of songs within uh, Macra Zero. Um, this becomes important later, actually. Um, then, um, of course, in the original Macross and um, Do You Remember Love, um, they use the uh, love song. That's actually an old protoculture love song that was just like a, a popular song in, in the city. That people were listening to at the time um, and they use that to awaken the culture out of the Zentradi because it's something that they they didn't feel before so um, uh, that's where um, this comes in <clears throat> and I'm gonna bring up some other things later when I get to the Delta stuff um, then plus the the role of songs is mind control um, like, um, because of the whole Sharon Apple incident, the whole idea was to, to, to control the minds of people and to, to, you know, um, put them in a vegetative state. Um, now this is vitally important to Delta. Um, this is 
one of the big um, connections to Delta is through the what Sharon Apple does through music. <clears throat> it, it gets even bigger with Delta. Um, and then in 7, it's used as a weapon to push back the Proto Devlin, but it's also used um, in Dynamite 7 as a way to communicate with the Space Whales. Now, people complain about the Space Whales. There's, It's not the Space Whales in and of themselves that's important. This is where people misunderstand Delta, uh, misunderstand Dynamite 7. I don't, like, Dynamite 7 is good for what it is, but I hate the fact that it's an open ending that just kind of just, you know, leaves everything unanswered. Um, it, it drives me absolutely crazy, so I don't like, that's what I don't like about Dynamite 7. But, um, the, the key point is, this is a, a, this is a way that songs are used through communication that is very, very important to Frontier, okay? And this is why people overlook Dynamite 7, is they don't understand the, the, um, uh, how, what happens in Dynamite 7 is actually very impactful to the next story that takes place chronologically. Um... Which is, we shall get to now, Frontier. Why were songs important? Ranka, when um, uh, Ranka's mother was pregnant with her, uh, when Nanshe, and her name is Nanshe, her, Nanshe, I forget her last name. Um, she, this is very important because Nanshe and Grace were researchers that were working with Mao Nome. And why were they working with Mao Nome? Because they found fold quartzes. And fold quartzes were able to, you know, um, they, they found a way through the fold quartz to communicate. They could, uh, what, what happened was that Mao heard Sara singing through the fold quartz. And she thought, this is a way I can find my sister. Um, so, this is. Um, um, important because while Nanka's mother, Nanche, was pregnant with Nanka, she was supposedly infected with this, this, you know, bacteria from, um, the Bajra. And what had happened was, is that the Bajra have, um, there was a song through them called Aimo, that was a way to communicate with them. Now, what happened was when Danka was still very young, she was singing the song, and because she had a direct communication link through this infection or, or transference of whatever, this bacteria, it summoned the Bajra, and they thought they were trying to save Danka. And this is all explained in the two Frontier movies. This is the this is way the Frontier movies are very, very important. Um, that they could um, they could communicate with the Bajra. Now, why is this important? Well, the Bajra thought of humans as an enemy, which is why they attack them. But and they didn't think that humans were sentient. But through communication, through the song Aimon, through Danka, and actually Cheryl as well, in a way. Um, they were able to communicate the idea that humans are sentient beings, which is why the Bajra leave. Now, Aruto ends up going with them at the end of the Frontier movie, the second Frontier movie, which is, you know, why we have this stupid short 20-minute thing that came with the Delta movie that does nothing to advance the, the Frontier story at all just to make a music video for Kano Yoko to make more money, basically. <clears throat> um, which really pissed me off. I was really angry about that. Um, I'm still angry about that. I, I hate the, the Frontier mini-movie thingy that was with Delta because it doesn't do anything. It's just, hey, look, Ranka's singing, here you go. Mm. Oh, she looks a little bit older. Oh, here you go. <laughs> Who cares? But the point was is that it was that they were able to communicate with the Bajra 
and then take that communication and the Bajra stopped attacking people. Now, where do, um, uh, actually I have to add here, this thing. So, in Delta there's three key points and um, with the way songs are used. One is through healing. So there's the Vol syndrome where they this song is playing and, and then the people like lose control and they start attacking everybody. But that was only a test. That was just the beginning point. The actual goal of it was mind control. Now, what's the purpose of Wadikide is to stop the effects of the Vol syndrome. Um, and why can they do that? is because Mikumo is the clone of protoculture. <laughs> so, um, that's why, and then having Freya as a person from Windermere, which goes into the why the Windermere people exist, but I wanted to save that for a separate video. But between the two of them, they were able to, um, uh, you know, really connect to the protoculture ruins in that, in that particular solar system. Um, and um, they were able to, and Watercute um, was able to, you know, heal of all syndrome through their songs. This goes into a lot of the deeper lore of what happened after the events of Macross Frontier when the Bajra leave that area of space. I'm not going to get into that. That's not for this video. I want to speak specifically about the songs. Now, why do I put mind control here, like Macross Plus? Okay, so what happens later is that they use the the the, the wind song, which is Kazanuta, from uh, the the young king of Windermere. He's the first king of Windermere to be able to do that in over a hundred years or something like that. <clears throat> but through using um, through using the Kazenuta to start mind controlling people and then when they find out Mikumo is actually a clone of a DNA a piece of DNA that they had on Windermere that is actually Hoshinu Taite which is a, a legend that goes back in Windermere's history um, they're able to use um, Lloyd was able to use a specific phrase to control Mikumo to make her turn it into an entire like connect all living people in the galaxy as into one consciousness um which was kind of used as a way to control people so that they could have they could live forever they could have peace um you know all this other stuff right and it was a way to control them you could also um i wouldn't say it's mind control but in the second delta movie the um the sirens system is used to um, control the um, not only yummy cutie but also um, they use that to um, as the, I, the AI for the AI Valkyries which are basically like giant ghosts I mean because they're, they're the size of Valkyries but they're all AI controlled so you could say there's some of that there now um, so we've gotten through mind control, mind, got through healing and now through birth um, why this is a kind of um, a spoiler to the movie of the second movie but well it's not kind of it is but through Freya's song a new life was I won't give all the details but through Freya's uh, song she was able to 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 communicate directly with the siren system which actually had another piece of DNA that was from the same DNA of Mikumo which is why Yami Kumo looks exactly the same. That's the the, the other four were through uh, AI deep learning, where they where it created copies of that. But the original one was Yami Kumo. Um, and that's because it's the same DNA. Um, and they thought that would work better than the Sharon Apple system than the bio so it's like using the Sharon Apple system with an actual living organism so that it doesn't have the same faults is what happened with uh, Sharon Apple. Um, that, that's the, the rationale behind why the siren system existed in, in the second Delta movie. Well, Frey is able to communicate directly to that to that living organism that ends up growing and becoming a baby. So, um, 
and that's why I say it's directly connected to birth, which goes along with kind of the macro zero thing of healing and, you know, like being able to, to revive or, or to bring life to things, right? Um, so that's, these are the basic rules of um, uh, what's going on here. Now, to go on to something that um, Belgar Stone in the Delta TV series says, if you look at the history of, of the songs going from the the the, um, the beginning of Macross, it is it's the episode called Eternal Songs, um, where he goes into this, and it's his theory that songs were weapons through protoculture, and because if you look at um, how they were able to control, like if you use a song no one dies they all just peacefully give up and they just you know like go under the control of the song and he thinks his theory was is that they were used as weapons that could subdue people without bloodshed um and that was a theory that he puts out in that episode so if you want to know the details of all that watch the episode of delta tv series called eternal songs i think it's 17 17 or 18 is right around there. Uh, watch that episode and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, <clears throat> so that's why, like, in 7 specifically, they, they did, like, sound force with putting the speaker pods on, on the Valkyries to increase their power and all this other stuff was <clears throat> directly saying that they're using songs as a weapon to, you know, like, subdue the proto Devlin. Now, Basara didn't think that. He thought he was just trying to get his, his, uh, to get the, them to, like, listen to a song. But, um, uh, this is where, um, people kind of, you know, turn it into a meme about Basara and, and, you know, oh, that's all he ever says, just listen to song, blah, blah, blah. But it's actually, that there's more to it than that. So, but this is where the, it was used as a weapon. So when you look at, at what uh, Belger Stone's theory was, it, it kind of makes sense in some ways. But that's up to interpretation too. So I say everybody just watch that. You decide whether you believe his theory or not. Wait for the second Delta movie to come out and then kind of put it all together. Now I didn't write two here. But it's also mind control. Um, what are the emulators in, of the Marduk? They are, um, they sing the songs of war to keep the Zentradi under control. And it's, and also to, um, um, like, get their more motivation to fight. It, it makes them, you know, want to fight stronger. And then they have the Shinuta, which is a song of death. Um, which is basically, you just, like, cause the Zentradi to, to go crazy and... Um, they, uh, they basically kamikaze themselves into everything. Um, and it ends up, the Shinota is actually, um, it actually kills the Marduk as well. It, it's kind of like a, um, like just wipe out everything kind of thing. Now, <clears throat> with the Vol Syndrome in Macross Delta, if you go back and, and you watch how the Vol Syndrome works in Macross Delta, and then you look at Macross 2 within that context, you could say the emulators are pushing out that effect when they do um, the Song of Death, is they're doing the same thing. Because the effects are the same. So this is why I keep saying Macross 2 is canon. But, um, but to, to bring it back to this, to the song thing, is that the main point of the songs is mind control. Um, now, of course, you have your, like, Ishtar sings, Moicha, I love you, and then stuff like that. But, and, and songs actually play, like, a, a role of bringing, like, new culture to the Marduk, right? But it's, it's a little bit different, um, than the original macros. The main focus is mind control by means of the emulators. Because 
Wendy Ryder in Macross 2 is not really that special of a singer, and she's just kind of there. So, um, that's why, like, she doesn't play a, a very important role, really. Um, Ishtar is the main, and the emulators are the main singers of, um, Macross 2, so that's why, uh, Mind Control becomes the main key point there. Or, um, or kind of like a, a, a motivation technique, or a, a way to, um, use the mind control Zentredi to do just do certain things in battle. So it, it's all about control through there. So this is um, the basic um, role of songs in Macross. It's much more, it's deeper than what people say. And this is why people don't understand Macross very well in the English speaking world is they don't understand how the songs all connect together, how they, how the roles are very different within each series, um, why each thing is important. They just take the songs as songs and that's it. It's much, 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 much deeper than that. And, you know, um, you know, when I get to the, 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 the timeline video I plan to do, I will um, be sure to mention specific events within the protoculture era that are very important to the evolution of songs within this paradigm, okay? So, um, but I wanted to discuss this because it's, you know, something nobody talks about because they don't understand it. And this is why I am so adamant about, you know, going after these people who make content about Macross who don't really understand the um the deeper workings because either they watch some stupid fan sub that is subbed poorly and doesn't actually have all the, the protoculture lore to it or they don't look into the protoculture lore for themselves they don't know japanese so they can't they don't have access to it especially with the second delta movie because i was only in the movie theater so far um and i'm not sure that that is act that's actually been shown anywhere outside of japan so you needed to understand Japanese to be able to even understand what happened in that movie. I saw it three times, so and I've said that in multiple videos. So I have an understanding of it. I'm going off of memory for a lot of it, but that movie was was shocking in a lot of ways. So <clears throat> it, it it really drove me crazy. Um, but um, but yeah, this is where. I think songs need to be looked at more closely in Macross outside of Japan because people just don't understand it. And I think even people in Japan don't understand it. They just say, oh, Ranka's cute, Cheryl's cool, blah, 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 blah. And they don't look at the deeper lore of this. And the deeper lore is really interesting in Macross. Like, and the fact that not every question is answered, and Kawamori is very adamant about keeping it that way. So not every question is ever answered about everything. So um, this is where you can do a lot of theory crafting within within the universe. So anyway, I wanted to just go into the details of the songs, and I hope this helps people understand a little bit more about like what Macross is, and in more detail. So. Um, and I'm going to continue doing these lore videos because I think that they're they're important for people outside Japan to understand. So, anyway, uh, that's all for this video, and see you in the next one.